Is there not an entire section on this subject? Yes, my dad, so it's unfair. I may have, I may have saved my mind about me for example. Is, is your, is your book for sale about it? Yes, it let me tell you, 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 let me Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Let Me Tell You, episode 120. I am your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. the Evangelical Norm. So, excuse me, don't drink an entire bottle of water before you go on and do a podcast. Just a note for those who may be interested in doing this kind of thing. There are things you shouldn't do, and I do them all the time. Um, that's probably why I only have 200 subscribers, but we hit 200. And I want to just say thank you to you guys, because it's because you hit the subscribe and the share and the likes and all that stuff that makes Mr. Algae Rhythm. Now, now I, I just want to say I've been using that name since long before the sequel that nobody asked for, Space Jam 2 came out i've been talking about mr al go al g rhythm al go rhythm um i've been using that name for a long time so i'm not stealing it from space jam so if that's what you're thinking no i'm not but thank you because you guys influence mr al go rhythm to uh bring other people in and get a little bit wider uh dis uh well, almost a dispensation, but I don't know that that's the word I really want to use. Distribution. That's what I'm looking for. A uh, whole different thing, completely different. Uh, distribution to people, and they come, and then they subscribe, and we get bigger and bigger. So I hit that landmark of 200. I've been asking for it. We got it. So thank you guys for all you do. If you're new here and you haven't hit the subscribe, hit the subscribe, hit the like, get all the content that is released here on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. You can go over to Gab. I'm over there. Not recently. I haven't uploaded a lot of stuff there. It's just it, to do both. It's kind of uh, bad, and YouTube hasn't kicked me off yet, although it does feel like I was in YouTube jail for a few days. I wasn't able to upload anything from, I'm not sure what day I did my last uh, Let Me Tell You episode, but I did it on COVID, and then Saturday I came and tried to upload a Master's Dog episode and a False Teacher of the Week, and it wouldn't let me upload. It wouldn't let me upload on Sunday, tried to upload on Monday this morning, uploads are working so here i am i am knocking out videos and doing some uploads uh, getting caught up on the podcast thing and so thank you guys subscribe uh you can follow me at the master's dog or the evangelical norm on twitter um a fun a fun twitter i got is grumpy the troll you can follow me there um i don't do as much on that but it's fun um yeah, I, t I like to troll people there. So that's what's going on, and that is a little background on the podcast. Thank you guys for uh, all the the subscribes, likes, everything that you guys uh, throw at me and give me, um, yeah, opportunity to just grow more and more and more. So today, <sighs> it's it, I don't know. It has been just a crazy week, and last night was an insane night at work. Um, likely the worst night I've had um, in the coming up on eight months that I've worked there seven or eight months it no more than seven it's had to be nine or ten months wow I'm coming up it's July August September October yeah I'm coming up on a year uh, working at my new job graveyard shifts it can it can be rough but I like it I love the job, but I almost quit last night, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the podcast, but this week has been pretty nuts, and I mean, I don't, I don't get the fact that there's literally among Christians, there are arguments over modesty. Now, okay, I, I guess there's, there technically you can have some, some legit arguments, uh, 
whether or not it's legalistic and not, I mean, you could get the apostolic churches that force women to wear ankle length dresses and head coverings and, and so on. And yes, we have women in my church that wear head coverings. We have women that don't. So those of you who always want to accuse my pastor, Brian Sauvay, we're going to talk a little bit about him today, um, of being a legalist. The fact that there are some women that wear head coverings by choice. And there are a lot of women at church that do not. And none of them have been kicked out. Kind of defeats the argument that that Brian and and the rest of our elders, Dan and Kevin, uh, I used to be one of them, uh, are legalists. Because they're not. We weren't then. They aren't now. I mean, theonomists, yes. Belief in the fact that, that... the, the God's law was a, a really good basis for all the laws that we follow. And the fact that we, as those who have been saved and redeemed, we should be doing our best not to sin, which means we should be trying to obey the law. Does that, do we lose our salvation if we don't? Absolutely not. We recognize that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, to the glory of God alone, as revealed in Scripture alone. We recognize those things. But we also recognize that Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. We should be attempting. People who are saved who want to follow the law are not legalists. They're not, a theonomy is not a bad thing. As long as it's, it's, regulated right. Yes, if there are theonomists out there that go, you should obey the law, and if you don't, you're not saved. No. But those who are saved, wanting to not sin, which means not violating God's law, and again, we can get all the deep into the wo- the weeds about, you know, the, the dietary laws and the civil laws and the moral laws and, and so on. We should be obeying the Ten Commandments and things that are revealed throughout Scripture. We should be trying not to sin. Where the Bible says it is sin, we should be doing things that we should avoid it. Do we, again, do we lose our salvation if we fall into sin? Absolutely not. Those that, if we've repented and put our faith in Christ, our, our, we are, our salvation is secured in Him. We are written on his hand. He, is, he holds us and none can snatch us from his hand, not even ourselves. Right? So let's, let's dispense with those arguments right now. But modesty has obviously been a big topic recently. So first and much more well known than the second issue I'm going to talk about is the fact that Matthew West... Uh, did a, a and it was a funny video. I had no problem with it. I I, I recognized it as being tongue in cheek, but he's deleted it. I was going to try to show it to you. I can't find it anywhere. Matthew West West deleted it. He was pressured enough, not by the left, but by supposedly conservative and Christian people that were so angry that he would make this video about being a dad who wants his daughters to be modest. He's, I think he's got three girls and he would like them to be modest and and to dress because this is what the Bible tells us to do. It literally tells women to be modest. This is something that immodesty is a sin. And again, it's not because, and uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but so Matthew West deleted the video. He was pressured. It was a funny video. I wish I could find it. I, I it was it was great. It was funny. But because of the media pushback and and Christians mo- mainly, I believe, he deleted it and then he apologized for it, which I thought was really ridiculous. But okay, you do you, Matthew. If you want to delete your videos, so on so forth. Do what you got to do. But then this week, my pastor, Brian Sobey, and yes, I am, I am absolutely, I, I hate to say I'm proud of my pastor because, right, it's like we're Christians. Are we allowed to be proud? Um, I am glad that my pastor is willing to stand firmly upon the word of God, that my pastor is willing to 
make statements um, and defend them as the word of God. And that, now, I've watched my pastor admit that he was wrong in things that he said and done and, and so on. So again, it's not that he's so arrogant and so, uh, you know, full of himself that he doesn't recognize that sometimes he makes mistakes, right? But this is not one of them. So he put out this tweet and, and I'll read it for those of you who are um, listening online to the audio. Uh, it says, I'm mad guys. I'm mad because the white knights out there defending the quote unquote freedom of Christian women to dress like whores are actually defending the hatred of our daughters and the destruction of our sons. There is seemingly no depravity the antinomians won't defend. So again, and, and people lost their minds over this tweet. And again, the, the statement of women to dress like whores. Now, again, what the, the accusation was and what Brian did not say here is that women who wear bikinis are whores. He did not say that. That was not the statement that was made. And he did not call them, he did not say they were prostitutes, although that was the, the accusation that was made. I think there is another tweet somewhere along in the thread amongst con, uh, comments and replies and so on, where there is a, a place where it says dressing like prostitutes slash whores. Um, this is a, it's a strong term, but it's true. Not to say that, that, that the, the, those who wear bikinis are whores, but it is in the manner of dress as one who would be. And actually, I mean, honestly, I mean, I've driven around Ogden, and yes, even in Ogden, Utah, we have prostitutes that are out there, and you see them, and you recognize them. And they are skimpy clothing and tight clothing, and so on. You know, you know who they are. I mean, the, the, the few prostitutes that I are there are well known, are known, right? You see them all, all the time, day, night, whatever, they're out there. And the fact that, I mean, bikinis show even more. Now, and here's the deal. Here's, here's some of the stuff that I wanted to talk about and deal with this. But, I mean, again, he, I mean, even to the point where, I mean, a, a, I don't know if Twitter counts as slander or libel because it's all printed. So that would be libel. But again, it's not really a press thing. So it's a ad hominem attacks against Brian in this. And the fact that people were saying, you know, Aaron Harding, who I'd never heard of before, but apparently she's somehow connected to the, to the Gospel Coalition, um, said that basically Brian would be one who would defend rapists and say that women, because of what they wore, which is, again, an absolute ridiculous statement. And especially in the fact that Brian would say that any rapist should deserve the death penalty because we're theonomists and we look at the law of God's law that says rapists should be put to death. They should deserve the death penalty. They should have it. Now, granted, our legal system does not give that to them. And that's more of a, an argument for rape culture than any of this stuff. Anything that says that, that, you know, men having an issue with lusting after women who wear very little clothes um, <clears throat> is rape culture or whatever, right? The fact that our legal system does not do the, the most effective punishment, does not Im execute the most effective punishment upon rapists, which would be the death penalty, causes them to go, okay, yeah, they go into prison for a little while and then they're let back out. And obviously everybody who has an issue with prison reform and stuff like that are, are willing to admit that prisons don't really do a great job of rehabilitating. So why are they not doing something that deals with the problem? So again, I, I, it's, it's a crazy thing to be accused, to accuse Brian of 
would be a guy who would defend rapists when he absolutely is not. And so then he retweeted that quote and, and it went on. And then Beth Moore uh, brought in her two cents, the BD on Yabwile, Kyle J. Howard, which, I mean, that's just ridiculous in and of itself. The fact that that guy even has a platform is mind-blowing. I'm, I'm boggled at the fact. But let's look at a couple of things here, because, again, the biggest argument I've got about this is, oh, we can wear whatever we want to wear. And, and guys, it's not our fault. We're not leading men to sin and blah, blah, blah. True. Well, partially true. Men are responsible for their own sin. Men are responsible for taking control of their eyes and their thoughts and taking their thoughts captive. Absolutely. A man looks at a woman with lust. That is his sin and his sin alone. And it is not her fault that he has that problem. But modesty, Paul calls, and this is in scripture, and we see it in, in different areas where Women are called to dress with modesty. And it's not that they need to be modest to keep the guys from sinning. They need to be modest because God said be modest. And that in, it's in and of itself, whether it's leading guys. If a woman is dressed immodestly, according to scripture, and a guy never ever sees them. It's the same joke. If a tree falls in the woods, or if a guy talks, says something in the woods and there's no woman around to hear him, is he still wrong? If a woman dresses immodestly and there's no man around to see her, it's still sin. It is not sin because she's leading him to sin. It is sin because God in his word says it is sin. So we're not telling you, or we're not, we're not, it's, why am I so worried about words? Again, it's this whole thing of we are giving you the instruction of God's word, the counsel of God's, the entire entirety of scripture to say God's word calls this a sin. And we are encouraging you to do what Jesus said. You have been redeemed and you've been saved to good works. Don't go and sin no more is what he said to the woman caught in adultery, which probably wasn't actually in scripture. In scripture is an interpreted thing, but we can, I think there's still, uh, um, why do I always lose words? There's still, uh, wow, completely drew a brain. A, a blank on this. The the principle is still uh, beneficial. There's still benefit. That's what I'm looking for. There's benefit in the principle, whether that's an actually an interpolation in scripture or not. But the story of the woman caught at the well, when Jesus writes and he says, you know, where are your accusers? They've gone. And he says, go and sin no more. He doesn't say go and, and do whatever the heck you want. Again, Jory Micah put a thing, a, a a tweet up and I'm, I don't know if it's in response to Matthew West or if it's in response to Brian or whatever, but she was like, basically I can, I can wear whatever the heck I want. Well, that's the attitude of Satan of I, the, the pride that I should be able to do whatever I want to do and not have to, to submit to God's word. And, it, and, it, and these are the people that will pick and choose Theonomists and, and, and so on are always the ones that are accused of, oh, you cherry pick God's word and da, da, da. But no, the reality is, is those antinomians, as Brian would put it, and I don't think they're all an completely antinomian, but those who would defend these things are choosing, picking and choosing what they want to follow after in, in God's word. The reality is Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You are saved to good works. We are saved to do these good things. James says, if you, if you have faith, show it to me by showing me your good works. By, uh, try, by walking in holiness, by attempting to increase in our holiness. These are the things, but again, your, your Jory Micahs and your so on, that, that choose not to recognize God's word as sufficient and infallible and accurate. 
they they just decided, well, we're gonna we're gonna go away with the uh, do away with those because Paul said it or this, and da 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 da. I've got a stupid things Jory Micah says coming up today that is just all on that. So, or no, I don't think I've got that one coming up. There's another one, but we'll we'll get there. So, again, the pro, the the question of the day is, what's wrong with modesty? Why is it that people fight so hard against this? It, 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 I don't understand. I'm sorry for the... the I, don't, I don't know how to not make my uh, different notifications bing and ding and so on. So I, I can turn my phone down. But yeah, we'll get... Let me turn the volume down on my phone. We're almost done. But still. Okay. What's wrong with modesty? What is wrong with it? Why, why do, do, especially women, fight so hard against this? Why do they push back? Why is it that you demand your ability to wear a bikini? Right? I mean, when you can... And again, what is the, what is the purpose of a bikini? To, to get a tan? Or well, what is the purpose of a tan? So people will look. And ultimately, ultimately, it's so men will look and be attracted and turned on. That's the intention. That's what porn is for. That's the reality. That wearing a bikini, a two-piece, I mean... Whether it, you, it's fashion, it's this, it's that. You can be just as fashionable in a one piece. I mean, I'm not advocating for ankle length, wrist length, 1920 styles bathing suits. But again, I, I, I do not go or I, I don't go as much as I could to the splash pad, to uh, the, the water parks and so on with my wife and my daughter when they go. Because I, I basically have to look at the ground the entire time. Because yes, I recognize that my sin is my responsibility. So what do I do? I don't look. Because the intention behind that, and if you're saying it's not, you're lying to yourself. Bottom line. Immodest dress, there is only one purpose for immodest dress, and that is to get those of the opposite sex to look and to be attracted and to be turned on, and that's what porn is for. And that's sinful too. I'm not, I'm not advocating the use of porn. I'm saying that is the intention of pornography. It's the same intention. I, I literally got banned. I've never been inside the Tilted Kilt restaurant in, in Phoenix. But I was banned from there for life because I posted a picture on Twitter or Facebook or something of me wearing a shirt talking about porn and saying, should I go wear this at the Tilted Kilt and see if anybody feels convicted? Um, or should I go to uh, Chili's and have dinner? And I did go to Chili's and have dinner. And, and it became this whole big thing. And the guys from Tilted Kilt obviously saw that they were mentioned and they came. And they literally banned me for life because I, I compared the clothing that they require their waitresses to wear to porn. But it is. It is there to explicit a certain response from the opposite sex, which is sexual arousal. That's the intention. Hooters, any of those restaurants that are out there, that is the intention. And that's, that's the bottom line. So what's wrong with modesty? Nothing. It's actually what God instructs women to do. And not in, it's not an instruction to prevent men from sinning. It's an instruction in and of itself, which says that immodesty is sin. And so you don't dress modest to keep your, your, the man from over there from sinning. You dress modest because God said you should. And that's, that's it. That's it. It's because God said it. But all of y'all are going to ignore that part of the Bible and that scripture anyway. So 
What's the point? This is my, my last little rant. And this is this is what almost caused me to quit my job last night. So I got a funny picture. Again, for those of you who are listening online, um, I've got two pictures of masks that say fully vaccinated and vaccinated and so on. I thought I turned the volume down on that thing. Um, which one, I, I just don't understand. Because if you're vaccinated, doesn't that mean you're okay and you don't need a mask? Right. So why would you wear a mask that says you're vaccinated? This is this is my problem with the guy that's driving down the street by himself in his car with a mask on. Nobody else around. And you know that that's the guy that's fully vaccinated. And if you're fully vaccinated and you're wearing a mask, doesn't that mean you don't think the vaccine works? And if the vaccine doesn't work, then why did you take the vaccine? And if the vaccine doesn't work, then why do I need a vaccine? If your mask works, why did you need a vaccine? If your mask doesn't work, why do I need a mask? But my work, I'm not going to mention where I work. You probably find out and so on. Right. But they have instituted a policy that they have given all those people who have been vaccinated A nice little badge with a green line so that everybody knows that they're the upper class citizens in the in the workplace. They've been vaccinated. They no longer have to wear masks. They no longer have to social distance. They can gather in little groups and and hug and, and do whatever it is they want. But those of us who don't have the pretty little green line on our badge, we have to social distance. We still have to wear masks. Might as well get to the point where we have to have our own separate bathrooms, drinking fountains, entrances, uh, back seats on the bus, whatever. I almost quit because, again, there's no way you can tell me this is not discriminatory. I'm amazed that this is even legal. And so, I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It literally, to me, feels like they've created for me a hostile workplace. And I've 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 gone through this with my uh, our HR uh, lady, and I'm I'm intentional. I'm intending to write an email to the person that instituted the policy just to voice my opinion. My motto has always been: I will voice my opinion and then do what I'm told. because this is a job and I like my job and I like the paycheck that I get for my job. Um, I, I wish I could podcast professionally and do it full time and that I could get paid from this. But again, I mentioned too many things about COVID and stuff to be uh, monetized on YouTube um, and get the, the distribution that I need to get to the point where I could do this full time. This Now at this point, it's just a hobby. And I love my hobby. I love podcasting. I love interacting with you guys that do interact. And I know that watch week after week. But so again, all this stuff has been talked about with them. It's not that I'm just coming on on social media to vent. But it, it literally is. I don't understand how this is legal to say we are discriminating against the people in our, our company. You know, and, and again, not to mention HIPAA violations of... The fact that they sent out an email with a list of all the employees that have not been vaccinated. That's a, that's a violation of privacy if I've ever seen. Oh, well, it only went out to the managers and supervisors. Still, it is not my business or no one else's business, managers or supervisors, to have my name on the list of people that have not received a vaccine. It's not their business. It's not anybody's business and none of the other names on that list who have not been vaccinated are any of my business so i wish i hadn't got it because it's not my business it it is their privacy and it is being violated by sending this email out to everybody who has and has not been vaccinated i just i don't get it i don't get it And again, we are becoming so divided and all these little things that just come up to to just increase the divide among people and churches and so on. I'm 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 amazed. I'm in awe that the fact that people are willing to do this. (sighs) But I got through it. And I, I'm still working. I, I almost walked. Out, I literally almost walked out on on our production floor 
with a mask on with a yellow star of David on it. And one of the other supervisors goes, probably an emotional response that is going a little bit too far. So I considered it and I said, yeah, you might be right. So I took it off, threw it away, went out, went to work without a mask. Like if I can protest while wearing a mask, I'll wear a mask. If my my silent protest is going to be something that could get me fired, then I'm just going to go out there without a mask like I've always done for weeks upon weeks. I've been walking around that place with no mask on. I've had COVID. I'm immune. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not going to catch it from you. I have confidence in my immune system while all kinds of other people really don't seem to have any confidence in the vaccine that they keep pushing that everybody needs to get. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand. But there you go. There you have it. That is my my thoughts for the day. We have hit a 30-minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you have any other comments, questions, um, anything you'd like me to talk about, I'm, I'm always open for requests. I'm, I'm willing to take requests um, uh, and file them into whatever podcast they need to be in. I do a bunch of them. Um, you can find them all here on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. Um, you can find the Master's Dog, False Teacher of the Week, Unsolicited, uh, music, movies, TV shows, reviews, stuff like that. Um, the Fifth Seal, uh, Awareness about the Persecuted Church Around the World, um, and live episodes, hopefully more regular again now that she's back on on Twitter, and i am uh, got a little more time to, to, to devote to it. Live episodes of Stupid Things, Jory Micah says. We'll be returning today. I got one. I got one for you. So um, all those things are available. Again, hit the subscribe, like, share. Invite your friends to come. If you think that I say anything that might be interesting to anybody else, share it with them and just let them make the decision on their own. And uh, if they want to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe hit the button hit the bell hit the yeah, all that stuff um let mr algae rhythm algo rhythm uh know that we are here and you are here and you want other people to know that i'm here so thanks guys uh it's been an interesting podcast I've, i'm just like I've, mind has been blown and so i'm 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 it's not good for the podcaster to be speechless, but some of this stuff has just really made me speechless. And so hopefully, yeah, <laughs> there you have it. I'm done. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time out to be part of this. As always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words because they're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.